Hello, my fellow mods, and welcome to The Perspecta. I'm your host, John O'Neill, and in association with DC Hillier and MCM Daily, we just had a heavy conversation with two very joyful and resilient people despite their current situation in North Carolina. I will admit, although I heard about the devastation from Helene, the gravity of the situation didn't truly dawn on me until seeing the first-hand accounts of local businesses in the area who have virtually lost everything. I'm so pleased to have witnessed the immediate outpouring of support for those affected, both locally and online, from those who share similar passions from afar. And it was this type of awareness that I thought we could quickly bring as a very small supporting gesture to two veterans of our mid-century modern community, Megan and Todd. They are truly remarkable, seemingly always being there for their partners, friends, and neighbors in Asheville, both before and now after the storm. The stories of their growth and evolution as a business and family is truly impressive And it gives me great confidence that they will reestablish their brick and mortar experience again to the highly curated, thriving, relationship driven design destination that it was only weeks ago. We welcome you into this conversation of love and support with Atomic Furnishing. Well, um, no, let, let's get in. Thank you again so much for for joining us. You know, like I said, during a, a bit of a difficult week, difficult time, um, wanted to just lend support more than anything and or awareness. Um, for me personally, you know, learning about the, the situation in Asheville, I do have some friends and, and family members there, but your account, some of your stories, you know, in, in, um, you know, researching to talk to you and get, getting on my radar from our little mid-century community that impressed on me even more so than I, I was aware. I mean, the, the, I think you posted a photo of the lows and the, just, the water level was above, you know, above the lows. I mean, that's she left, she left her car in the parking lot. <laughs> to be safe at Lowe's <laughs> because it's right down the street from our shop. Right, right. And so I drove her home and so it was 20 feet underwater. So. But it was still really <laughs> far away from the river. Like we would never have never thought. Never in a right. million years I, ever thought it. Or I wouldn't have left it. There. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, yeah, so. it's absolutely insane. I'm sure it's not, you know, not even hitting you guys yet. But, um, you know, it does seem like there's a, an outpouring, you know, from the community, which is a good thing. I mean, is it mm-hmm. is it worth? Do you want to just give us like a brief brief account of some of what you're going through and what your day has been like as it relates Oof. to, you know, <laughs> in a, in as well, light of a way as you, <laughs> you prefer? Well, every but. day has been a kind of a roller coaster for sure, us because sure. we have like ever since this happened have gone through every stage of grief, yeah. every stage of uh, adrenaline, yeah, yeah, every sure. stage of excitement for new possibilities. Yeah. Um, we have kept a lot of humor throughout this. Yeah. Um, I was That's on a, another podcast and um, I, w- I read a comment and it said, it looks like he's in the humor stage of grief. <laughs> <laughs> because all I could do, even from the moment we saw everything gone, yeah. I'm just a guy I like to crack jokes and, and try to find the funniness. A little bit of and, levity. It's important. Yeah. yeah. It is all, all that keeps us from crying yeah. sometimes. No, <laughs> yeah. We had, we had our vendors come in at one point to like see what we can salvage. And we were all like laughing to keep from crying the ent- entire time. And Todd was saying things like, look guys, there's all of our hopes and dreams. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. because it's just unreal. It's Even unreal. You see the devastation. It's yeah. just, it's like, it takes a long time for it to register. And I think for us, a lot of it didn't really start hitting us until once we had posted what had happened and we yeah. started reading the comments of comments, people like just looking at the picture you just posted, right? Yeah. That looks yeah. like it's somewhere I, I else. Was, <laughs> I was just in the laughing stage and the numb stage. And then I started reading the comments while we were sitting in the parking lot using the phone at the mall because it was the only place within 45 minutes of our house to use a phone service. at that time. No service. Yeah. no service anywhere. 
So I was reading the comments and reading the people that were supporting us through GoFundMe and all yeah. that stuff. And I and I started reading how much outpour of support we have for being in 10 years of business and started seeing people I hadn't seen in five to 10 years. Yeah. And I just started bawling. That's heavy. I had not cried that hard since my dad died. Yeah. And I would, and Megan was outside of the car talking on the phone and she was like, she ran to the, I to the car. Right, 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 right. I was like, like, well, who knows I what kind of news is coming in anyway. Right. You know, I but, couldn't control yeah. it. Like, I don't even know because I'm a stoic guy. Like there's hardly anything that gets me to, to cry. Yeah. Um, but I just broke down yeah. in that moment and I, it was kind of good. Cause then after that, I was just, <laughs> another joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, as far as like your answer to the day to day, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, the, so it, it's been, it's kind of crazy. It's been three weeks since it hit. Yeah. Um, and so the first week I would say every day was just like complete survival. Like we had Fight no power, no water, no service. Yeah. Um, we would drive, like he said, drive 45 minutes in a town to this one parking lot near our store and like try to email, call, text people. Cause we had, you know, 30 vendors, yeah. um, customers. I had a lot of product, like over, I think $17,000 of the product that people wow. had bought that hadn't picked it up yet Oof, that I wanted to refund. refund, yeah. you know, cause I yep. wanted, it, it, even though we lost everything, like it was still in my we heart. Did the right like, thing I wanted to do business. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, fir the first two days we were just trying to drive to our store to see what right. it looked like. Because it was unpassable in every direction. And we knew there was back ways through neighborhoods to get there. Every neighborhood I would go into, there'd be a tree down the road or a tree on the house. A tree down the road, tree down the house. You could not get through. Apocalyptic. I mean, yeah, it, it was. was, a, it was, it was. I grew up in Florida. I've seen many a hurricane. Sure. This was the worst devastation I'd ever seen. And it's not just our area. You go to a little town named Marshall, uh, Bat Cave, Lake Lure. Uh, Burnsville, where we live, yeah. everywhere has their patches of devastation that is nothing like we've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, mm. So, Oof. yeah, the first week was like survival. And then we would try to get out and help as many people as we could. And so we're like, okay, right. well, we've lost the store. That's it. Let's help people get food, water. And so we went our, driving around and like we, getting We drove down stuff. to Greenville, South Carolina, because yep. we yep. knew there was no gas from anywhere till there. We had enough in our Sprinter van. To get down there, we filled up, we bought water, like apples, bananas, yeah. anything we knew people could eat fast and it wouldn't go bad super fast. And we just started driving around through parking lots. We The mall, Whole Foods, we went to Black Mountain area and we found people with, with lawn chairs in, in the gas parking lot yeah. and people just walking down the road looked like they've been walking for miles. And, and this, what, I remember the one thing people said at this one gas station, they're like, We've had a thousand cars drive by here, and no one's asked if we needed anything. Yeah, and that kind of hit us really yeah. hard. So, do more. so we yeah, went yeah. back for a whole nother batch. Good on you. Stuff. Good on you. Yeah, <laughs> we came back just to get out of our own heads. Like, because like, what are we going to do at this point? Sure. This, our store is gone. The best thing we can do right now is make sure people are are cool, are good. Yeah. And then once all that settled, we started thinking, okay, now what? Yeah. yeah. So then we then we took a little time. We contacted our vendors and said, hey, guys, like we have some access. We're going to do these two days. If you want to come to the store. And I was very honest. I said there's really not much to be, to be, to be salvaged. salvaged. We lost all of our furniture except for two coffee tables. Um, yeah. We had just stocked up too because we were preparing for our 10 year anniversary party that was supposed to happen. Yes, the Friday after the we Friday did. after this. Um, so we, I mean, I'm talking like we had just went up to Illinois and bought the most Broyhill Brasilia we've ever had in our store. Yeah, yeah. It yeah was, I saw, I saw yeah, the we had posts before. Yeah, I saw the perspective <laughs> in there too. That that also for uh, me reaching out, oh, was, you know, felt like serendipity. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, they... <laughs> it, was, it was the it was it, the creme of creme. Oof. And I had been a DJ for 30 plus yeah, years yeah. and I was trying to have us start having night events yeah. there. Um, so I bought like $7,500 worth of sound equipment and lighting. And we were, <laughs> that course. was our, our, our 10 year anniversary was going to be a start off to having like bands playing sure. in our big back oh, room right on. And, cool. and DJs. And we, and we wanted to be open later hours. So we really had this whole idea of a new concept to be, it was called Atomic After Dark. Yeah. And, uh, a little scripty it font. Was gonna I be think awesome. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. It will be. Look, it will be. It will be. It still will be. You guys have uh, clearly the right mentality, the resilience, yeah. and and everything, yeah. and um, helping others. I mean, and it sounds like that's kind of been your 
you know, acting sort of as a hub within your community, mm -hmm. within the store, you know, prior to the storm, right? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm curious, um, you know, just, just taking a look from afar, right? Um, having a bunch of vendors, you know, that that's sort of a unique model. Uh, I feel mm -hmm. like it's a unique model to have your own shop amongst, you know, potentially other vendors, right? Yeah. Um, where you probably can be, you know, somewhat diplomatic about how it's run yeah. and it's, it seems like a, a, a nice network it's and you've got, you know, it seems like well-rounded, right? You've got plants, you've got music and, you know, a lot, lot going on there. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. We always had, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, um, yeah. We always had the idea, like, cause we, you know, obviously we pick and so we like antique malls and, but sometimes you get overly stimulated. It's too much yeah. for people to take in. And we have some really fantastic antique malls. We did have some great antique malls sure. on either side of us of the river and um we wanted to create something a little different you yeah. know something a little more curated something more turnkey for people it was more of a home decor destination where if you just yeah. purchase a home and you want some art you want local handmade furniture or mid-century some records to listen records to, to listen to yeah, um it was just an experience and you know people would walk into our store and it was funny there was something about it where when they would leave they were always very kind and so many people would come up and say it's just something about your store. I don't know what it is, but it's just special. Yeah. And that made us, you know, want to try harder and keep, yeah. keep continuing. And that would get us through the hard days. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. of course. So, so how did that come to be? Right. Did you, you know, get a bigger space with, you know, we can go back maybe into your sort of origins and, and story here a little bit, but um, was, so was having together, multiple vendors always the idea or did you kind of just start together? We selling? started out in like an antique mall sure, sure. and we started out with a really small booth and it was not, not very big at all, but together we, uh, made it really impressive. And so at, in a short time, the person who ran the place said, Hey, I'm going to give you this really big booth up front, you know, and it, it, it really helped us take off. Yeah. And then we had an opportunity to get a small little 500 square foot shop in a little town north of Asheville. And so we were paying more attention to that shop than we were our booth. Yeah. Because we were like, right. oh, man, we could really make this happen. So Yeah, more control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were told, hey, your booth's not looking as good as it has been. I'm like, well, we should probably give it up because we really want to focus on our shop. Yeah. And it wouldn't be fair to you for the opportunity you gave us. So because we started out that way, we had an opportunity to get the space we were just in, the one that yeah, flooded. Yeah. Uh, the antique mall people who owned it said, hey, guys, we like you. Sure. We, we are getting out of this business. What do you guys think about taking oh, wow. it over? We immediately were like running there. Right. We were like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> we ran, like, I used to pick there all the time, a really cool big space. And I was like, oh, yeah, this could be really something. And so we were calling everybody we know. And we're like, hey. You're a potter, you're this, you're well, that. Let's band actually, together. Yeah. <laughs> before, it was actually really risky because we were jumping quite a bit in rent. Like, we were going from a 3,000 square foot workshop, like warehouse yep. space at the time, where we mostly were just open by appointment weekends yep. and online to like, okay, well, now we're going to go onto this like main road area where we'll have to have full time staff. Yep and vendors to be able to help us afford the space and 12,000 square feet and 12,000 square feet. Oh, yeah, so we're like, pretty... Whoa, it was pretty, it was pretty like leap of faith kind yeah, of thing yeah, because of what happened is we had to sign a lease before we could announce that we got the space. So I had no idea if vendors would even want to come and join our like ship. Right. But we had a concept and we thought of we it. had a good concept. We signed the lease and then I made like, um, an app on our website that was like a, uh, what's it? application process and said sure. hey like this is what we're doing on instagram and we got flooded with response wow. like we were so grateful that the community wanted to like come yeah come with us so well, and, even and our it's brand really asheville more broadly is is an art and design centric it, it community is. right so i'm sure yeah so we really want to focus on collectors supporting that community yeah you know because mm -hmm. not everybody can afford a brick and mortar no, you know, so this is an opportunity. And I, I've for them seen just to get you know, a taste. in the online, you know, community that we have, right? And I run um, the Mid Century Modern subreddit, so there's a lot of people trying to get identifications there. Um, yeah. But you know, you see brick beautiful, like nicely vignetted, you know, interesting curation. Like you see these places closed too, and it, it's it's mm -hmm. such a bummer. Yeah. 
Uh, we had yeah, one in yeah. Hoboken that moved, and we had one in Jersey City, Lenovo, you know, focuses on Danish, and they just moved to Danger. Red Hook. Like, you're always, you know. We love Red Hook. Yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, we love, we love Jersey. Hard to get yeah. there, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I go there for some Danish furniture, of course. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, that's, I'm, I'm sure t- these are some of the considerations you're looking at now, right? It seems like you're going to. Um, you know, trying to try to find new space, right? How, how's that yep, process yeah. going to bring your we're late night right, vision to, we're to bear? We're hopefully right, right at the finish line. We can't say a whole sure, lot about sure, it, no, but, but it's great. like... Good to hear. It's yes. making us feel very optimistic. And then like we have a goal and we're like, we're not in limbo and like yep. the possibilities yep. of there are pretty amazing. Awesome. And so That's we're great like... It is great because I will say like the search was very limited. Like we have been searching, honestly, as soon as we got service, we started searching because we were like, we have to have a space. Our space is done. And we knew there were going to be so many people in our shoes, like not just our type of business, but all businesses are are going to need spaces. And we, we kind of put it out there on our Instagram right away. Like, Hey, does anybody know a landlord or a commercial property owner because we are going to need right. something because we're, we're the type of people that we need to get back up and running and, and fast. Yep. Um, and, and what's hard is the people that um, like us, all of us that were along the river and the river arts district through the antique district, we were kind of locked into pretty affordable rates because they were really old buildings. Sure. It was cool. They had good character, but they didn't have no heat, no air. Like yep. um, we had to do all the work ourselves. I mean, we spent probably $70,000 just into build out yeah. and like, upkeep of that space and so um when we when this happened and we started looking at the market we were like immediately just kind of dumbfounded at the prices that Asheville was now asking for commercial real estate because it was um quadrupling quadrupling (laughs) what we were paying and so we were like oh god okay how do we because we always honestly pride ourselves like on keeping mid-century somewhat affordable yeah, like we totally. want to be affordable and even our booth rents like we were really low on booth rent because right, we right. we were getting a good deal so we pass on a good deal because yeah. we want people to be successful of course you know? of course so, yeah no, it's like we, li- we like having network. every yeah. kind of person come in like a young family that's just starting out we want them to come in and build an afforded bedroom set but will we have like a what do we have a harvey Proverbs sofa recently mm. that we had sixteen thousand dollars on because right. it was a leather patchwork <laughs> sectional yeah. and we pay a lot for it. Yeah, of course. The one table I stayed was a friend of mine gave it to me on consignment and it was a Paul Evans. Oh, wow. You know, so like that's the one thing I saved because I was like, I got to get this back to him. Right, <laughs> right. No, you, you yeah. really, I mean, that that was part of the mission when we started the podcast too a little bit is just education on this stuff. Yeah. And like you yeah. can still somehow, I mean, inventory is going to dwindle over time of the, the yeah. really expensive stuff, but you can still yeah. find stuff at the thrift store. If you yeah. know what you're looking yeah. for, like, and that's, you that's, you know, I, I think what got me into this um, yes. interest and in, in learning about the designers and specifically uh, yeah. American, you know, mid-century <laughs> design. Like I love the case goods, you know, Broil. Yeah. I go yeah. pretty deep on Ken coffee, obviously with um, yeah. the Perspecta namesake here. Um, but yeah, the, the funny thing is, yeah. is the Perspecta bedroom set is the first pick we made after, after? all this. All right. Yeah. It was like the rebirth. first bedroom That's great. set we got. We were like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you don't know. Yeah. It's state sales yeah. or Facebook or wherever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. but do you find, so, you know, thinking about this area, um, Lenore obviously is close. Hickory's yep. close. High points a little bit further Drexel. away, right? Drexel's right yep. here. Um, yep. Do you find that there's an influx of of let's call it's, it inventory and or knowledge about it, you know the, there's this knowledge. Of, there's knowledge. Yeah, and you find people that have worked at the factories yep, yep. back in the day. Um, we actually bought our sewing machines. The first one we started out on um, from a couple that had been working at those factories sure. forever, and they were surprised at a young couple. Back then. Youngish, <laughs> um, a couple was getting into sewing yeah. back then, you know, because they're like, "This is a dying art." And the funny thing about it is, we don't find a whole lot of like the Broyhill, the Drexel, no, and all that stuff down here. I mean, I do know. Yeah, it the, sounds the, like the you went to Illinois. You know, <laughs> we go yeah. up north <laughs> to it, get furniture that originated in North Carolina it back to the, <laughs> their home, the home it was made. Sorry, up north dealers, love it up here. <laughs> we course, do. Of I'm just, course. 
yeah everybody can pick anywhere that's that's part of the but game. I do have like a, a friend who lives in Drexel and he does find a decent amount of Drexel yeah. in that town. Um, a lot of people that probably were working at the factory yeah. and they just like were able to get a good deal. There, um, there's not a lot of mid-century in Asheville though because it just was not Asheville's scene. It's very sure, traditional. Sure. It's a little more mountain town. Yep. Um, and so it's, that's why like we I think we do well. It's because... We offer something you can't just easily find in the area, yeah. but it is also very hard on us because we have to travel really far to find to get it. the product. And, and we mix it up a lot too. Like yeah. we're not like a mid-century museum. We, we like to be a little bit of everything. We kind of have some rustic, uh, some modern. Yeah. Um, we just like, we want it we want not to look like a museum. Yeah, and, I hear you. It's got to be accessible. Yes, affordable if possible. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, sometimes you... Don't want people sitting on it, laying on it, but <laughs> not, yeah. not the sixteen thousand dollar so couch. Hard. But <laughs> for us, since we do the new upholstery, yeah. it was it's a huge battle for us because obviously I want people to sit on it. I don't want to be like serious sitters only, but at some points I have to when it's like a white sectional. I spent <laughs> yeah. forty hours. Well, can you not have your seven year old over here, please? And that's why some I'm like, people no, let their kids it. like jump all over <laughs> right. it. Like some people are just having like when we bring our kids in. It's true. I mean, yeah. they will. When we bring our kids in, we're like, do not. Please. Touch Take it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I always like say, well, I'm like, I have kids. I know I'm right, not, right. not anti children. I no, just, it's no. just, it's, no, it's just the reality. There's a line. Yeah. yeah. So is it, you know, are you guys both doing upholstery and refinishing? Is that she, all she in does house or? Most of the sewing yeah, yeah. aspect of it. I help her with the upholstery. She likes me to. Put it together, tear it apart. Sure. She, so, she does a lot of put it, put together too. Yeah, it's funny how it's changed. Like he forced me to learn how to, to upholster when we first started the business. But then, like two months of us starting, he said, "You need to learn how to upholster." And I barely knew how to sew sure. a decent pillow, not yeah, even one with a zipper. <laughs> and so I'm like, "What are you talking about? Like I can't do this." And he was like, "You've got this." I'm like if we're gonna be in this, we've got to know how to do I our. I mean, own that's stuff honestly to- upholstery. Even refin- re- refinishing helps them the margins, right? But like upholstery yes, is upholstery a does, different level. Time. I mean, it's, you it's to, the only thing that can help you really sustain the business, quite frankly. Yeah. I mean, if you, if you have to contract out upholstery, there is no profit no. margin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he like in the very like I would say the first five years, um, I would do all the sewing work and he would do a lot of like, we would take a part together and he would do a lot of the assembly part. Sure. Um, but then in the last five, I have gotten more and more confident and now I'm kind of a perfectionist and I, I'm like, no, you give it to me. I want it. Like, don't, you, you don't do this. Like, so smooth it out yeah. much better if, than I will. If it's a certain, if it's like a special corner. designer here, I'm like, no, give it to me. And now he even knows he's like, you should yeah. take this yeah. one. Like, you got it. And You're honestly, a lot of, because yeah. we don't have a lot of employees right now, yeah. we, um, really it's just us right now. We used to have five employees in our workshop. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we are like she's upstairs in the upholstery loft and i'm downstairs refinishing right. stuff and then if she needs me i'll run up and if i need her yeah i don't do any refinishing i sure. i've never learned i think i tried sanding something like the first <laughs> month that we were together and like i broke through and he got <laughs> upset and i was like okay i'm not doing this this is too stressful hey, you found your your lanes <laughs> that's, yeah yeah it that's is very perfect. true no, it, it works very, very well especially as a family <laughs> business i mean that's that's incredible yeah. I'm fascinated yeah. too. The, the kids seem to get in on the fun a little bit. Oh your, yeah, <laughs> your it, they're it's troopers. Great. Like yeah. they'll be working, and they've no probably time. seen <laughs> right. Have probably seen more of uh, you know the the area and and you know yeah. going on road oh, trips and stuff. I mean that's they go into antique malls. Incredible. They life know what to look for. Quality. Like they're yeah. like, oh, that's something you would be in your store, mom, or that's something you would probably sell. And it's so funny that when we go into wow. antique malls, uh, my six year old says things like, "It's like your store." But not as nice. And I was like, "That's really sweet." He said that, you know. The, our so three-year-old, cool. when he saw the, the our store, and after the flood, he he kept saying, "Furniture broken. Oh. Furniture's broken." Yeah. <laughs> or like your stores, your business is underwater. He, he kept saying, "Business underwater." Or underwater. I'm like, "Yeah." We, we, know. we were like giving out food to people, right, and he would right. like type in like, "Our parents' business underwater." I'm like, you don't need to tell him that. <laughs> well. It seems like he knows what's what's going on, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and that's that's a little levity for you too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, with that yeah. situation. Um, hey, hey, Megan, tell me more about your art. In addition to yeah. your upholstery uh, craft here, um, so that is like something I 
I went to interior design school. That's what my background's sure. in. And um, so I met Todd. I was doing a design project and bought a piece of furniture off of him. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> but um, so when I was in design school, I, you know, we had to take perspective drawing. And I did that. And I liked it, but it was kind of a little too rigid for me. Sure. And um, I always had the, like idea that I wanted to paint one day, but I was never quite brave enough to try. And so um, when we were doing the business together, I always thought interior design was kind of like a structured creativity. Um, yeah. But then we, we so when we so our, opened our, one of our stores, we had an abstract painter in there for a while and I loved his art, but he was never producing it quick enough. Like I would sell <laughs> sure. it and I'd be like, I need more art. And right. so one day Todd looked at me and goes, why don't we just make some? And Todd is actually the painter. He's oh, actually right a on. really really talented painter. He does murals and stuff. And so I'm like, well, <laughs> and I said, you should just do it. He's like, no, let's both do it. So he bought us some paint, some canvases and we painted for like a day or two. Yeah. Experimented and we put them both, we put them all up and somehow all of mine sold within like a week. <laughs> there you go. And sorry, I'm like, sorry, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> you, you do the painting. And so then I, I just kind of started going with it because yeah. I was enjoying it. And it wasn't really That's until after I was postpartum with my first, um, six years ago that I, I am just a busy body. I can't sit still. And so those first few weeks after postpartum, I just went crazy with the paint. Yeah. I just kept painting and painting. Sure. And, and I kept telling her, let's buy another easel. Yeah. yeah. Let's get buy another easel. easel. Let's get, get five up at once. So you're, you're not just wet in the paint to do one painting, right. do a bunch at once and use a kind of business mindset yeah. and yeah. creativity. And then she's always like sending me pictures and saying, Todd, what does this need? I do. What does this need? Yeah. And I'll be like, uh, it needs orange. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, it That's was a so pretty, funny for the pretty easy mid-century uh, <laughs> recommendation. For several Turquoise years, orange, our, little, little bit of yeah. <laughs> For several years, our entire living room, I think for the first two years of Hawk's life, was just my art easels everywhere. We yeah. had no furniture. It was just art easels. That's cool. Um, That's a cool so, environment yeah. to grow up in. Yeah. I can't quite yeah. say so that my about my are... little guy. Yeah, We've got some cool our, furniture our, for our, him to climb all over, but oh. no no our, art easels up. <laughs> we'll do some paintings with her. Like, we'll give him a canvas. And yeah. yeah, a lot of times yeah. I'll give my six-year-old the bottom part. I say, go ahead and do the first few layers for me and like buff, get, get it built up for me. Cool. And he loves that. And then I paint on top, sure. you know? Of course. Textured. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm sure, yeah, you, it sounds like you had some good intensive time periods to sort of figure out yes. your style. Like right now, I'm painting like crazy. Yeah, yeah. it's my therapy. Yeah. It's like it's my release. And and now her paintings are at, at in the photo area of our workshop. Yeah. So the whole photo area is easels. Oh, right on. Yeah, and and some of your paintings are currently on auction. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So awesome. we actually were. It was crazy that we were able to salvage so many. Yeah. Like they. They had a lot of mud on them, but a lot of them were just floating, I guess, you know. And um, at first, I was like, "No, Todd, I don't want to. I don't want to." And I was like, it. "I'm sorry, I'm pulling every one of these yeah, out." Yeah, anything and you could I salvage, got them right? All out. Yeah, and I, I took them back home and got a lot of other artists' canvases out too. And I spent seven hours with a pressure washer just doing like, every single one, yeah. doing the front, doing the back, doing inside. I wanted to make sure I got every little bit of anything out. Yep. And then we just sanitize them, and then yeah. now, it, and then Todd was like, "Well, we should do an auction." I'm like, "Well, I don't know how to do that <laughs> yeah, on our website." The, and then I had to do a nine-hour crash course to figure out how to do auctions. Wow! But yeah, and so I figured it out. Yeah. So, so now, now we're giving half to people that have lost their homes, sure. mm -hmm. and then half to rebuild atomic. That's incredible. So. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. And is um uh, is there another auction going on? from so there is a North father Carolina. and son yeah tell us about that yeah they oh my gosh like it has been such a beautiful thing to see you know dealers and the surrounding areas yeah. come together and want to support yes. us like wow like i think that makes me emotionally talking yeah. about it but um yeah so father and sons they're in raleigh and they reached out to me like within days of this happening and said hey if we don't know how we're gonna do it but we want to pull together an auction and, and to benefit you guys we feel awful what happened and uh we were like, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And so, yeah, like, I think I'm not quite sure how many dealers, but it's a lot of dealers in their area that have donated, you know, all kinds of mid-century items yeah. for sale. Wow. It's amazing. That's awesome. So, yeah, I would say, you know, if, if you're listening out there somehow on yeah. this podcast, <laughs> certainly go check out both auctions. And I would say yeah. uh, certainly, you know, go check out the GoFundMe. Um, you know, it so sounds like... You've got 
some plans, you know, you've got some space, hopefully you've got a vision, obviously. Um, what are the next couple steps there, you know, without giving too much on, on trying to, you know, secure that and, and well, get once we back. get the space, we will be in there, like build out, right. we will be painting, we will be, uh, getting, um, vendor booths ready. Yep. We kind so of the concept is still all... vendor. You yeah. might have no space Yeah, we for talked that. to all our vendors. We actually had opportunities to go to other cities. Like sure. we had people sure. contacting us yeah. with spaces for rent in Charlotte and all. And we're like, we are here to rebuild Asheville. Yeah. And, and we're it's here to commitment. rebuild our own community of people that we had with us because we're like family. Yeah. And like we couldn't just go out and just start our own thing somewhere else and just take, think about just atomic building again yeah. we really want to get all of our vendors back on their feet and and the, we've been on the phone with them constantly and making sure that they they want to come back yeah. and and so we're all going to be like basically in there as soon as the first day we can and we're all going to be like volunteering to build yep. the space back again build and out. that's a good that's point awesome. too that he brought up is that like i don't think for people that are not in Asheville or even in the surrounding areas people don't truly understand the devastation that's happened to our area, not just like us and losing yeah. our business, but like, if you think about it for, it's been three weeks and so many businesses are still not working. Yeah. Like all the restaurants are just now barely opening because they didn't even have like water. Saw some of the breweries as well, you yeah. know, they're, and they're so still all you closed. Think about the ripple effect of all this well, and they're, how their employees and then whoever. Yeah. It's just, a, it's, there's so many people. I see so many businesses having to get GoFundMes for their employees. Yeah. So there's so mm -hmm. much, yeah. stop a business happening right yeah. so with that said it's like we feel in our heart like we have to help Be rebuild actually this is like we are in a place that we can't help 30 other families or maybe more you know with this new space right. and so even though it is a big i will say it's it's a risk for us because we are going up in our rent significantly yep. to do it um we have young kids todd's old just kidding <laughs> <laughs> okay we got the levity in there again yeah. good <laughs> Good on you. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's like, it's a big risk because, I mean, we could easily, I mean, there are places in Charlotte that we would do really well because we have a lot of customers in Charlotte. Sure. And um, you could ask more for your price point there. And, and like Asheville. in the Greenville area, they have so many great warehouses and there's like, there's all these other opportunities, but yeah. we, we really love Asheville. We feel like all the people who've ever bought from us are like, investors in our company yeah mm -hmm. you no know, and then we feel we feel like they deserve to have a comeback story too yeah mm -hmm. you know because when people get beat down this bad it's nice to watch them get back up and keep going because that's what small business is <laughs> every day right I, I, yeah. I, was, yeah I was gonna say I mean to an extent <laughs> just your story and and the plateaus you've had i mean that all takes resilience it takes i mean i'd like to do that myself one day whether it's a, a shop or you know yep. a business and not be working my you know nine to five um yep. that's why we're doing this on the side right but yeah um you know you've you've taken all the steps and and it sounds like you've you've learned a lot of lessons over the years that you can apply to the new space and yeah you know it's all about taking some of the mistakes and, and, you know, learning from them and, and, and trying to make it better the next time. Right? Yes. Fine, fine, fine tuned yeah. us very well. Yeah. Well, we were just getting to the point too, because this the last year or so for a lot, I've probably talked to a lot of mid-century dealers. Yeah. It's been hard. It's not been a great yeah. economy yeah. for, you know, retail. Um, and so when that kind of thing happens, it always helps makes me and Todd, like think outside the box of, okay, what can we do? that would make things better. Yeah. Is it more online sales? Is it like a better way to get more people in here? Is it to have more events? Like what is the thing to help us keep going? Yep. Cause we don't like to just stay stagnant. Yeah. No, you um, can't. And, yeah. And you're yeah. already diversified with the various vendors and the, you right. know, having pillows and or furniture and art here. and, you know, a, lo a lot available one stop shop yeah. to an extent. Right. Uh, There's always two options like to quit. <laughs> or, or, or come, or come up with a, a, a new idea. Yeah. And that's where we're always at like crossroads all the time. Mm -hmm. And we always choose the new idea. Yeah. <laughs> choose music, <laughs> choose love and entertainment yeah. and fun. I mean, it's yeah. uh, overwhelmingly, um, it does sound like there's, there's a lot of joy in your lives, even there, in like such a is, difficult time. Is. And that's, that's a testament well, yeah. to, to you both. And we're your su family, we're super your, blessed. Your community. I mean, yeah. yeah. We, we can't believe how much people want to support us. And it really has been such a beautiful thing to see because when you've been in business 10 years, you make so many relationships with vendors, with customers, 
over that time period. Yeah. I mean, the amount of furniture we've sold in 10 years is kind of wild if you think about it. And I remember almost every single one of those purchases. Yeah, yeah. I have such a, I know these people. Like I was in the grocery store, you know, once it finally opened here and I was walking through and I see this gentleman, he was going for the yogurt that sure. I was. And yeah. I said, oh, yeah, so you look familiar. And he's like, oh, I don't get out much. I'm not quite sure why. And I was like, oh, okay. And let him walk on. And then I went down a few other aisles and I saw him with his wife and I said, oh, they're definitely our customers. I know them. <laughs> And she saw me and she started crying immediately because she knew our store. Sure. And, and then I found out she had a store. I had no idea they owned a building that also flooded on the same street. Oh. And it was just like this moment where, you know, it's like sometimes Todd and I wonder, are we just selling furniture? What are we doing here? Sure. But it, we're creating. Um, I feel like we're more building relationships. relationships. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, and there's been so many times where we're like, uh, we don't understand it, but like, all of a sudden we'll be buying something from someone and they really need the help. They yeah. really need the money. So we're oh, like, definitely. And then sometimes, sometimes the same thing happens to us. We're like in a really bad position. can't find anything or have enough money. And all of a sudden it's just, a, it's kind of a, a, a really interesting way that it's things karmic. happen in the furniture world. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, just, just picking in general is, you know, it's, I think it gives you energy because of this discovery and it is a roller coaster yeah. and you got to have some, some scar tissue and thick skin for it, but you know, but it gets in your blood. It stays in your blood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you, you chase those highs a little bit again, right? You know, yeah. you get a first like in line on the estate sale. Yeah. Right? You're, you're yeah. having a good day. <laughs> my, my, my family's always like, when are you going to get a real job? And I'm like, never. Never. I'm really trying not to. <laughs> is, yeah. is, the, is the idea? No, I'm happy to do yours. <laughs> well, you, you've created interns now. I mean, you're you're almost yeah. there, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> no, that's incredible. Hey, it's been it's been really great to catch up. Is there anything else you feel like you know anybody who might be listening in this little community might might want to know about you guys and and your approach or you know just the the next couple couple steps here. I mean, if we've learned anything over the last three weeks, especially in the mid-century world, um, I think sometimes things can feel really competitive and, you know, people forget that there's like that other dealers are human beings yeah. and not just competition. And I think um, we've just been really blown away just to see how humans act in a like in a situation like this. Yeah. And it's, a, it's been a great reminder for us just to, you know just keep it on perspective in a way because it's like, it's okay if you miss out on the dresser that you really wanted. It's right. not that big of a deal. <laughs> right. You know, it's exactly. not life or death. <laughs> no, you can, you can get in a little tunnel vision on, on anything you do. And then yeah. exactly. you get a, you get a wake up call. And um, yeah, now, yeah. And the beauty we've one. seen out of this tragedy has been insane. I mean, I, even in our local fire department, it became a hub for donations yeah. and, and people helping each other. And I just had to film it as I was walking away. And I was like, this is why I live here. Because look at this. Yeah. Like, I, it's such a well-oiled machine without any outside help. Because this was the first, like, week yeah, or so. Before... So there was no outside help at all right then. And then. But watching the community come together and help everybody, it like, it was so amazing to see. Mm -hmm. So That's great. May it, may it long continue. May you lock <laughs> yes. down that space. Um, mm -hmm. And if somehow I can make the first after dark uh and come and yeah, come down awesome. i i would be more than happy to it sounds like you've got considerable dj experience awesome. <laughs> yeah. i bet it's going to be quite a quite a party we'll that's something there, to look definitely. forward to yeah, yeah. that's something yeah. to look forward to all righty yeah. well be well seriously Thanks, i mean guys. you know wanted to be able to get the word out a little bit make it make it real for other people who might be you know listening and, and following us so um just i just wish you the best of luck and um, yeah, good to get it all in perspective. That's a that's a good way to put it. Um, Thank you, guys. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending a moment to learn more about the situation in North Carolina and what the family at Atomic Furnishing and their vendors are going through. Their words have been very powerful, and I hope hearing about their first-hand experiences helps put things in perspective for you as it has for me. A wake-up call and a reminder to be grateful and mindful in life as things can change so quickly. We hope you'll consider donating or checking out one of the auctions to support Megan and Todd. 
were pleased to be just a very small part of the rebirth of their business and will be rooting for them for many years to come. Thank you.